Hello everyone, this is going to be a little video to discuss how to use World of Logs. Um, more importantly, how to actually browse the logs and find out inf interesting information. Uh, this is mostly dedicated for French showers. Um, I'm basically going to cover this for our guild so that the guild can use the tool a little more effectively. Um, so the main way to get to the logs for our site is uh, just go to our guild website and over here in the bottom left we have a nice little raid logs uh, th little widget and uh, it contains all the most recent logs. This has a couple of like random five man logs that I did for someone. But uh, let's go over to say BWD 10 man. So uh, what this does is this opens up a log and right off the bat you get a bunch of really confusing information up first. Um, first off, up at the top you have the guild name which will take you to the uh, guild's um, logs for World of Logs. You have the date and time of the log. You have dashboard which we'll cover later. You have full report here which allows you to select different parts of the fights. Um, wipes, kills, and bosses, or trash, or the full report. Then you can select individual players, going through each player by either class or name. And then you can search by the creatures, bosses or ads or whatever not. Alright, after you get past the top bar, you'll look down right below it, you got report. This is a report, it shows you the time of it, activity time, who was uploaded by, and gives you a brief little summary of DPS over the time spectrum, fights that are included. This report thing is actually pretty useless, I never use it. Then down below it you have damage done. This is very useful. This shows you the damage done and as you select different uh, parts of the fight um, via the full report for bosses you can s narrow down uh, what, what you're actually seeing in the report. For instance just search the Neff fight. Now you can see the Neff fight and you can see the damage done for the um, for the duration of the fight. You can see right here is phase 2 start, here's phase 2 end, and that's heroism the high point and uh, this just gives you an overall idea of what your raid damage is and uh, in terms of DPS as well as total damage done. To the right of it you have damage taken which is very very important for healers. Um, this lets you not only see the damage taken but it also lets you see healing done as well as overhealing. Um, uh, you can uh, look right here we have 30.7% overhealing for that, the Neph 10 fight um, damage taken was 47,000 per second, healing done was um, 46,000 per second with raw healing, that's over healing included. And uh, this just gives you a general idea. The graph for this also has a graph, but uh, it's a little less detailed here and there's a better way to look at the graphs for this. Um, below it you have damage done by target. Um, this lets you see what was being done for damage. This is for the bosses. Um, you see Nefarian and Ixia in the ads. Um, over here you have damage taken by spell and this is actually amazingly useful for tracking avoidable damage. Now while there isn't very much avoidable damage in uh, the Nefarian fight, um, there is some and you can uh, see right here like lightning discharge, um, you can see the spells that do damage and uh, I'm going to cover how to look at that and see who's taking the avoidable damage and uh, get more into it in a little bit but uh, first I'm going to cover the rest of this. Um, right here you have Dispels, Interrupt, and Spell Steals. This is very useful for keeping track of who's doing interrupting, who's dispelling, and spell stealing. Not that important in a pretty coordinated guild, but if you're having troubles or if someone's interrupting something they shouldn't be, this is a good way to track it down. Um, you can also sort by what they interrupted, but we'll get to that later. And damage taken by source right over here. Um, this is basically kind of just to let you know how much damage people are taking overall. Uh, I don't really find this frame very useful. Okay, and then the final thing on this page is you can see bosses, creatures over here, and then ranked players. Um, if you have had someone who did it particularly well, it will rank them. And uh, as you can see here, October got 32nd for Feral Druids on Neph 10, and I got uh, 169th for 10 Man Heroic Meloriac um, as a Holy Paladin. Um, these are specific for our specs, so this means only out of Holy Paladins. This doesn't put me against Druids or Shamans. Same for uh, his Feral DPS. It doesn't put me against Boomkins or any other spec. Um, there are rankings for those as well, but uh, this is just what we qualified for the, in this run. So uh, now I'm going to show you more how to look into your own uh, profile and take a look at yourself. So I'm going to cover both how uh, tanks can look at themselves, healers can look at themselves, and how DPS can look at themselves and uh, see how they're doing. So uh, first let's go look at myself.
So I'm a healer. So I'm going to go to players. I went down to paladin. Picked myself. Alright, so uh, we're still on the 10 man net fight. And uh, one of the very interesting things you can do when you go to this players thing is you see this massively annoyingly complicated graph. Well, this pretty much tells you nothing. However, up here you have a whole bunch of very useful um, tabs as well as a very useful tab up here, buff details. Uh, wait, that's actually not useful, sorry. Um, <laughs> you have a bunch of useful tabs here. Damage by spell, which is very good for tracking um, DPS stats. Um, uh, this isn't very useful for me as a healer. However, it does let me know how many judgments I was doing, which is really important for my mana region. But healing by spell is much more important. And uh, this lets you take a look at your breakdown. This is really kind of over the top, it looks like at first. But uh, once you get it down, it's a lot simpler. It's sorted by spell. It's arranged in ascending order or descending order from uh, the most contributing to the least contributing. And uh, it tells you its hits, the number of them, the average of it, and the total healing done by all of it, the crits, separate, and direct heal, and ticks. For a primary direct healing class like myself, um, I don't really have anything on this page other than the breakdowns that help me. But over here you see uptime. This is amazingly useful for tracking for healers and for DPS to see what your uptime on um, a lot of your very important spells are. My illuminated healing had an uptime of almost 80% and it contributed to 6% of my healing, which wasn't too bad considering how bad mastery is. But uh, this lets you look at your breakdown and lets you see what you were doing with your healing. Um, uh, down here, you have healing taken, and uh, this kind of lets you know what you are receiving in healing. Um, uh, this is actually kind of useful, especially if you have, you know, slightly more PvP oriented or survival oriented builds. You can see what was healing you, so, you know, if you end up taking any talents that add extra damage resistance, you can see how much healing you were getting from everything. Uh, my Protector of the Innocence was healing me for the most out of anything, which is to be expected. Um, but uh, yeah, this window's not as useful, but it's still useful if you know what you're doing with it. Um, I actually use it mostly to look at the overhealing of my protector. Um, damage by actor. Um, this is more, again, another DPS thing, um, but the damage taken from is good for anyone who's analyzing yourself. Um, you can see what you're taking from damage uh, from everything. Uh, it's actually pretty useful for boss fights to know, you know what you're doing and how much damage you're taking from which boss. Um, healing by actor, this lets you know how you were healing. This is very useful. It lets you see what your breakdown was. Mel and Jess are tanks, so of course they have the highest healing on them. I have a lot of healing on myself. This is because of the Protector of Innocence and the Electrocutes in this fight. Um, then it goes outdated, and you can see who you're prioritizing for healing. Um, down here you have healing taken from. It lets you know who you're taking heals from, who was healing you up. Um, then over here, buffs gained. This is actually a really important window for people who are tracking buffs that they keep up, uh, especially something like Death Knights or Protection Paladins who are trying to keep track of their uptime for the defensive um, abilities. So like Blood Shield or Holy Shield. Um, for me, it really doesn't have that much importance because uh, nothing I really have, I really care about. However, it's nice to see that Power Torrent's uptime was 25%. That's to be expected. Um, you can see debuffs, your, how long uptime of debuffs. This is actually pretty helpful for this fight if people are standing in the magma. You can see how many ticks they take. And power gains. You can see how much mana and how much holy power you gained. Um, as you can see, I'm spec for Blessed Life this fight, and it gave me 20 holy power, which is amazing. I'm not spec for Beacon of or Tower of Radiance, and I'm glad I'm not spec for it. Uh, Blessed Life is amazing for this fight. Holy Shot gave me 65. And uh, you can just see from this breakdown where your mana is coming from, Seal of Insight being the majority of the mana gainer for uh, me this fight. Um, I don't really need mana this fight though, so I don't plea that frequently, otherwise plea could be a little higher. Buffs cast, um, this is again a window for people who cast a lot of buffs, but uh, this isn't that useful. And deaths, deaths is also important for people, but uh, this helps you analyze your deaths. So uh, for deaths, let's go to a wipe real quick, and uh, let's go to like Archimedes, uh, this one. Bam. Death. It just tells you what killed you. Um, and uh, it's not as uh, detailed as I'd like it sometimes, but uh, it's pretty detailed. And uh, you can see a lot of information. I don't know if anyone uses the recount death frame, but uh, this has a lot of the same information as the recount death frame. It's slightly longer log. But anyways, that's enough for a healer. Um, now I'm going to go do uh, a tank. 
So let's go set this back to the Tin Man Neff fight. And let's go look at a tank. So let's go with the Death Knight tank, Jessica. Actually, you know what? Death Knights are not as good for this. So let's go with uh, Mel for Pra Tank. Um, so uh, here's again the annoying graph that tells you nothing. But back down here is damage by spell. And uh, this really helps you for uh, just seeing what you're prioritizing in your list. Um, uh, for tanks, it's not that important to see what you're prioritizing in your list very much. Um, but the damage taken is much more important, which is right down here. Um, for tanks, you can see what was doing the most damage. Melee was the massive damage here, followed by Shadow Breath, Electrocute. So if you're thinking about uh, gearing up for, you know, how do I want to gear for this fight? Do I want to gear more Stam, or do I want to gear more Armor? Do I want to gear more Avoidance? You can see where the damage is coming from, what the breakdown is, and uh, see what you want to do for your gearing. Healing by spell, uh, this is kind of useful for self-healing classes. Uh, Paladins have some small self-heals, and Death Knights have a lot more. But as you can see, he used Gifts of the Naru on himself, he used Holy Radiance, Word of Glory, Lay on Hands. Um, healing Taken, this is going to be massive for anyone who's a tank. Uh, good luck uh, determining anything out of it. Um, damage by Actor, this lets you know who was doing damage to you. Um, healing by Actor, again, healing, we've already covered this. Buff Gains, this is a lot more important. You can see, say, right here, Holy Shield. This is a really important buff to keep up. However, uh, this is going to be down quite a bit in this fight due to the fact that after Anixia dies, uh, the tank doesn't have a tank target for a very long time and uh, thus has no real need to keep up the shield. And uh, there's a lot of downtime in this fight. And he is the add tank, so he's kiting the adds in the third phase. And so his add, his uptime on Holy Shield is a little lower than what you'd averagely expect for this kind of fight. But uh, this lets you really keep track of your uptime on defensive debuffs. Uh, so let's pop over to a Death Knight real quick, our Death Knight tank. And uh, for Death Knight tanks, you have a lot more buffs that you're going to keep up. So this is a lot more important of a window. So uh, right here you see Blade Barrier. Nice 57% uptime on it. That's very, very important. Blood Tap, another very important Death Knight cooldown. We've got 50%. Uh, do we have Blood Barrier up here somewhere? Oh, Bone Shield, got 24.7% uptime. It's not going to have very great uptime, but just due to its nature of the spell. But uh, Anti-Magic Shell, 3.6% uptime. That's because you want to save that. But as you can see, you can look through here, and you can see what was the uptime on your buffs. Lichborn. And uh, for Death Knight tanks especially, we, who have tons of buffs, Blood Shield right up here at 40%, um, this really lets you look into the logs and see what... Uh, you uh, basically were doing with your buffs and see where you can optimize where do you need to pay more attention to maybe you know try to keep up you know specific cooldowns more frequently like vampiric blood could be used a bit more frequently it had a little lower uptime but uh, these are all little things you can use to micromanage and improve yourself of course this is farm fight for us uh, we just farm this this was a one is shot on it normal and so uh, our tanks are probably being a little bit slacking <laughs> Also, um, a really cool part of this tool is this useless graph up here actually has a pretty good use um, when you are using it in conjunction with spells. So let's uh, go and take a look at, for instance, Vampiric Blood. You can see when Vampiric Blood was used for this fight, um, right up here. And uh, this is extremely useful to see where you were using this for damage fights. Um, right here you can see Vampiric Blood's lined up right after DPS spike. Right here it's right after a damage spike to her right here it's right before a damage spike so that was a little predictive and uh, you can use this to see how well you're doing and how you're using your cooldowns in a fight um, uh, let's go to anti-magic shell and uh, you can so you can see that it's layered and that uh, multiple uh, buffs can be laid over to show uh, how the cooldowns are going so uh, let's overlay all of the death knights uh, different uh, cooldowns that they have to uh, use up I'll pause this while I do this. 